Over the course of the last couple of weeks, we've seen Mayor Pete be a little bit more confident and more direct in kind of tacitly calling out the other candidates. He's been taking these indirect shots at Bernie Sanders as of late, and I don't know what he thinks he's going to accomplish, but this obviously undermines the Democratic Party establishment's plea for unity. Because obviously, if they're going to say Bernie Sanders and his supporters should play nice, then don't you think that they'd follow their own advice? Apparently, that only applies to us, and they don't have to follow that same standard. But a couple of weeks ago, he kind of took a thinly veiled shot at Bernie by saying, you know, we can't, you know, um, expect to win if we have these loud liberals screaming, something to that effect. I'm paraphrasing. I know Kyle did a video about this, so I would encourage you to watch that. Um, just this last week, he compared Bernie Sanders supporters to Donald Trump supporters, and now he is raising doubts about Bernie Sanders' ability to defeat Donald Trump in the event he becomes the party's nominee in 2020. Now, as Rachel Frazen of The Hill reports, Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg said he doubts fellow hopeful Senator Bernie Sanders can beat President Trump in a general election. I have a hard time seeing the coalition ultimately coming together there, the South Bend, Indiana mayor told The New York Times. Buttigieg added that at the time, people were refreshed by the novelty of that boldness of Sanders' ideas, but that they are now less exciting. So there are two things that I immediately think when I hear him say this. First of all, is this a strategy that you and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer agreed to at your what to do about Bernie dinners? Is this what you decided would be an effective way to take down Bernie Sanders to sow doubt about the competitiveness of the current front runner. I know Joe Biden will be announcing soon. He probably will have already announced by the time most of you see this video, but one of the front runners here is that your goal to make us think that he's not competitive. Second of all, imagine if Bernie Sanders said this about any of the other candidates. Imagine if he said, "You know what? Pete Buttigieg, I doubt he could beat Donald Trump." There would be universal condemnation from the establishment. They would be screeching about this, saying, "Bernie, how could you do that? Why would you float this idea that someone from the Democratic Party isn't competitive. Why would you so doubt about one of our candidates, Bernie? But because it's Pete Buttigieg, I'm assuming he will get a pass. Now, the problem with him saying this is that in spite of how he may feel, well, it is the case that Bernie Sanders is very much so competitive against Donald Trump, because when you look at 2020 hypothetical matchups, Bernie Sanders is beating Donald Trump by a larger margin than Pete Buttigieg. So really, he should be worrying about his own chances against Donald Trump and not thinking about Bernie's. Now, to be fair, we do have less data about Buttigieg's chances, but nonetheless, with the available information that we have at our disposal, it does seem as if Bernie Sanders, statistically speaking, would fare better against Donald Trump than Pete Buttigieg. Now, you can also make the case that, you know, Hillary Clinton was polling about as well as Bernie Sanders is currently polling against Donald Trump in head-to-head -head matchups, but what you also have to do is look at how he fares in particular states that Hillary Clinton was not able to win, namely the Rust Belt. Now, according to this Tolchin research poll, Bernie beats Trump by 11, 10, and 8 points in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, respectively. And according to Real Clear Politics, Bernie has an 8-point lead over Donald Trump in Michigan, a 4-point lead over Donald Trump in Wisconsin, and a 10-point lead over him in Pennsylvania. And in Pete's home state, Bernie beats Trump by an average of 2.7 points. And in other key states, Trump would need to win in order to maintain the White House, Bernie also beats Trump there. So, for example, in Ohio, Bernie beats Trump by one point. In Florida, Bernie beats Trump by three points. Now, honestly, I don't really feel comfortable talking about polling data at this stage in the process this early because... Polling data is incredibly unreliable this far out. It's likely to not remain static. I'm, I'm positive it's going to change. So I don't necessarily think that we should rely exclusively on the data. But with that being said, with the information we have available, does it say that Bernie Sanders is competitive against Donald Trump at this point in time? Absolutely. So with Pete Buttigieg, trying to sow doubt against Bernie Sanders' chances against Donald Trump. 
not only is he statistically inaccurate, but he is doing something that is tactical. I don't think he truly believes personally that Bernie would not be able to defeat Donald Trump. I think any reasonable person can see that Bernie would fare very well against Donald Trump. But what he's doing is trying to sow doubts about someone who is probably his biggest competition. Because if he is smart, I'm sure he's expecting Joe Biden to face plant. So he knows now, let's target Bernie ahead of time because that's going to be our best bet if we want to, you know, win this nomination. We've got to take down Bernie. So I think this is strategic for him. But at the same time, this defeats this idea that we need to keep this clean. We shouldn't allow the Democratic primary process to devolve into name calling and insults and, you know, trying to besmirch the characters and electability and the chances of everyone else. I mean, they're the ones who say this all the time. We're not the ones who say that. They're the ones who say this. The establishment, that is. The, you know, political class, the elite class, but yet they can't even follow their own standards. So Pete Buttigieg is someone who, more and more, I dislike him. The more that I learn about him, the less I like him. I was initially impressed by the way he was referring to policies like Medicare for All, And I like some of his policies, you know, talking about electoral reform, abolishing the electoral college, packing the Supreme Court and depoliticizing it. But by and large, this individual is just too centrist. And you can tell that he is currently high on his own farts because to attack the front runner, to attack someone who's incredibly popular and really to piss off the voters who you may need in the event you secure the party's nomination is a really stupid thing to do. I mean, we saw what happened in 2016 when Hillary Clinton basically spat in the eyes of the Democratic Party's base. So for you to start shit-talking this early about someone who is beloved, I mean, you can do that. That's on you. But uh, don't expect it to pay off for you. Because if you are going to punch Bernie Sanders, expect us to counterpunch. And I'll leave that there. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>